What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. I'm your host, O. Today, we got a very special guest. I know a lot of y'all been in his DMs, threatening him, but I only speak to, <laughs> speak to, his, <laughs> to his ability as an actor. So, uh, Mike, thank you for joining us on Community Voices. Definitely, definitely. Thanks for having me, my guy, for sure. Yeah, of course. So let's get into it. Um, take us through that journey of like, because everyone knows you globally as, you know, TV St. Patrick's, but, you know, before <laughs> that, you were acting on your grind and things like that. So take us through that journey of how you got to where you are today. Man, I mean, the journey is crazy, bro, because I, I never, like, I like obviously, like, I kind of wanted to be like an actor as a, as a young kid, you know, like, I was just watching TV and just be like, damn, I wish I could be on the screen too, but I never really, like, you know, pursued it, pursued it, like, until... I was in the city and I was working with my moms and a lady from this gen, uh, from this agency named Generation. She had she had just walked up to me and my mom. She asked my mom, she's like, "Is your son into acting? Like he has he has a good face for acting." Blah blah blah. And they ended up chopping it up for a little bit. And the same week, we went to their office and um, we were sitting down talking. And they got me some auditions for like uh, some Price Chopper commercials, some Target stuff, um, also Sesame Street, Law and Order stuff like that. So like, I started off like like out of nowhere really like it really just happened like the lady she came from generations and she she saw I guess she saw something in me I don't know how I don't know how but <laughs> she saw something in me and she and she took that chance and she she she, she gave me an opportunity so I, I started doing those little roles and then I did this one music video for an Italian singer and that that music video went like super viral on MTV in, um, in Italy so it was like number one uh, music video in Italy on MTV so there was an Italian uh he was a director, his name was yeah. Silvio Mochino. He saw that he saw that video, and like from that video, he 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 knew that he wanted me to be in his movie. So he contacted my mom. I don't know how he found her contact, but he got in tune. And um, yeah, I went to Italy for like ten days at first to go meet everybody at the product at the production and everything. And then I, I came back to New York, and then I went back to Italy, and I ended up living there for like a year, and like three months. And I did my first movie out there. It was like in full Italian and everything. So. Mm-hmm. That was like the one of the first, that was definitely, the, that was the first movie I did. And then after that, like a year after that, I came back to um, America. And then that's when I did the movie Love with Common and yeah. Dennis Haysbird and everybody. So that's really how my career kicked off. You know, it's just like, it was just a blessing. You know, the lady saw something in me and she just took that chance. She got the eye for talent. Hell yeah, she definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you do a lot of things on the side. So one thing I saw was you're producing now and making like your own beats and music so take us through how that passion came into fruition and you know yeah. doing it outside so music always really like music been a passion before before the acting came along like i've been into music since i was i would say five four or five like i heard it was two songs that i knew how to play since i was like four or five on the piano mm-hmm. by ear it was um public service announcement by wow. jay-z and then um the bridge is over by krs1 like those are the first songs i ever played on the piano so like mm-hmm. I just like fell in love with just, you know, just making making sounds and making music. So I just always carried that that, that musical talent with me. And just around 12, I would say, like around like 11 or 12, that's when I started like making beats like on the computer and, and, and with an electric keyboard. Cause at first I just really was just playing piano, but that like around 11, 12, that's when I really started making beats and, and taking like the, taking the beats really serious. So yeah. right now I'm really just, I'm just vibing right now. I'm about to, um, I'm looking forward to dropping the table with all my favorite artists right now that I listen to, um, American artists, dancehall artists from Jamaica, from Trin- Trinidad, like all type of artists. So like all the artists that I listen to on the daily, I want to produce for them, and I'm gonna throw that on a mixtape of my own. So I can look out for that soon. No, that's fine. Um, what part of Jamaica you from? Um, well, I was born in America. I was born mm-hmm. in Louisville, Kentucky. I was raised in New York. My parents moved to New York like a month after I was born, but. Like I, I, I really like I, I really take pride in being like you know having Jamaican roots. You know what I'm saying? Like my family is from Jamaica, so I got family that come from uh, Kingston, uh, like Top Range, around there, and I got family that's come from like Portland and stuff like that. So really, a lot of places in Jamaica, like I got I got family, so I really take uh, pride in Jamaican roots for sure. Yeah, my mom and dad's from there too. My dad's from Kingston. My mom's from there. I was just telling Push, I was in Antigua. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah. Aki and Sawfish, and I didn't have nothing that super like. They ain't had no Aki and Sawfish? Yeah. Bro, we need the Aki and Sawfish, bro. <laughs> That's really my favorite meal, bro. Top one out of out of anything I've ever eaten in my life, bro. Aki and Sawfish is the best meal, bro. I swear. Absolutely. With fried gumbo. 
Dumplings. Fried Dumplings. Fried Dumplings. Now, I, I like the boiled Dumplings, too, but you can't go wrong. Now, they do go hard, though. The, the, <laughs> the boiled do go hard. I ain't gonna lie. I had the boiled Dumplings the other day for the first time in a minute. I'm like, hold on. I kind of miss these. Because yeah. that the that's the first thing I ate after so was the boiled Dumplings. And I switched to the fried. And I'm like, hold on. The boiled is type good, too. <laughs> hey. But, like, moving on to the next question. Um, So, talking about how, like, we met on Clubhouse, right? I got the green bean, right. you know, and right. we just started linking. So talk about how, like, present you are just like within the community because I know you're really active amongst, like, your people on, like, Instagram and, like, Clubhouse mm-hmm. and things like that. I'm active, man. I feel like it's, like, you know, being, like, a public figure, you know, everybody kind of knowing who you are, like, you kind of really got to know what's going on within, like, you know, the, like, the society and the community, especially, like, the Black community, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. like, I feel like I just got to always be in tune with what's going on. I don't really want to be too lost in the soul. So, you know, I just be keeping up to date with everything and just making sure, you know, I know what's going on. Cause you, like I say, you can't be lost in the souls, but right. um, Clubhouse is definitely one of the things that I, that I got, that I, that I was in tune with for sure. I was like, oh, this shit, this shit is pretty fire. Like I got to tune into this. So um, yeah, I'll take Clubhouse cause you could, it's unlimited things you could do from Clubhouse from just cool. even just talking to even having business meetings on Clubhouse to, all the type of shit. So, so yeah, Clubhouse is tough, but yeah, I really just be in tune with the community. So, yeah, yeah. that's a big, that's a big important part of being a, a public figure. You gotta be in tune. Gotta be in tune. You gotta, you know, keep your ear to the streets and just understand what's going on. That's and get people's opinions too. Hey, and, yeah. and then moving on, like I know, especially now, people are like super big on inclusion and things like that. So, speak to the importance of like you being on set and having like a diverse group of people working with you from like the cameraman to mm. directors and things of that nature. It's definitely important. Cause you know, like, you know, all the crazy stuff going on in the world right now, as far as just like, not even like COVID, like the race stuff and all that mm. crazy. It's just like, it's very important to kind of try to just bring unity, like, like within everybody that you're around, no matter what you're doing. So like having a diverse cast, having a diverse crew on site, it's like, you know, that's a, that's a big plus because you know, the world is like, it's in a weird place. I feel like, you know, just trying to just unite everybody, like, no matter whether you're doing music, whether you're making a movie, a TV show, whether you're making clothes, I feel like you just, just being able to, to unite a group of people and, you know, just, just create something from them and have good vibes within them is, is, is definitely dope. So I feel like it's important to have a diverse, diverse group, no matter what you're doing, no matter what project you're doing, you know? For sure. And it gives you, like, a different perspective from, like, someone else's eyes as well. So having just, like, all types of people on a set, you got different views and like opinions yes. to see and just makes the whole thing work, so. Yes, because everybody has different experiences. So everyone has a different story and everyone has a different opinion and different views. So having everyone, you know, share their views and thoughts and everything is, is, is dope because especially like, you know, being able to share them without anyone, you know, getting upset or without anyone having, feeling the way towards anything, you know, it's just, it's important. So yeah, that's definitely one of the big parts of creating, creating, you gotta be diverse. For sure. Now, lastly, uh, I read an article that the last time you was in Jamaica, um, you're really big on like giving back, you know, back to the people and being present. I think I read that you were donating like toys or like, you know, essential goods to the center as well. So take us through that. So what I do like in Jamaica, um, I really just, I just donate in, in any way I can. Like right now, obviously, you know, kids can't really go to school. So like right now they're doing school from from home. So I, I donated a lot of tablets out there. And I'm still, I'm still gonna, um, I'm gonna do- donate some more when I go back. Even when I'm not there, I'm still donate some. But um, right now is that's definitely one of, like the biggest things that can help the kids of Jamaica. Not even just Jamaica, just the whole Caribbean. Really, like a lot of those kids, they don't really have electronics that they could use to you know do schoolwork from from home because you know they 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 can't afford it or it's just like they just can't get to it. They can't access it. So it, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of problems that these little kids are going through, and you know I just gotta got to try to make stuff easier for them and the parents. So, you know, I just donate whenever I can, you know, I give them, you know, the, the tablets, I give them, you know, clothes, whatever it is, whatever it can help. I just, I just help. So yeah, that's why I, that's the name of my fund, my foundation is solid help. So any help I, I can give, I just, I just do it. Absolutely. You just got to pay it forward, especially when that position, when you're in that Hell position yeah. to actually do it. So when you're in a position to give, bro, you got to give, you got to give because you're not gonna you're not gonna be blessed if you just you know if you're selfish, bro. You can't just keep receiving and not giving back. So that's definitely one thing that I'm big on, especially my mom's too. Like she always stresses that like you always gotta give back and 
and show that you're thankful for the people that support you and show that you're thankful for the people that are, you know, that are watching you and really support the, the stuff that you do. So that's definitely one one way I show, like, you know, my respect and, and my appreciation. I try to give back to, to the community for sure. Definitely. And shout out to moms. Friends. Hell yeah, shout out to mom. She's, she's the GOAT. <laughs> Without mom, I wouldn't be nowhere where I am right now. So shout out to mom. Shout out to sure. her. Oh, yeah. sure. And, you know, us at JD Sports and Finish Line, we love what you're doing. You know, we're big fans of yours as well. Shout out to Push and Putting This Together as um, too. Definitely. And, you know, we want to make a nice donation of 10000 to your foundation because of the work you've been doing in the community. That, Especially back at home too. So we'll take care that's of that on the back end of things. And, you know, I, mean, I know you're a busy guy, so that's all I got for you. I'll let you have the closing remarks and words. I know you're mm. filming right now, so I know, you know mm. people are waiting. They're itching for that next season. Oh, yeah, facts. We on set <laughs> right now, matter of fact. I just, I just, but well, we didn't finish. We still uh, filming the scene, but um, we just we just started filming one of the scenes for, for season two. So we, we on the way for everybody yeah. that's asking. We on the way. We about to be out there real soon. The supporters and the fans. So, yeah, I don't really got much to say, bro. I just want to thank everybody that's, you know, that been in tune with me and been watching my career and my growth. I want to thank everybody that you know supports the show, uh, Power of Two Ghosts, and that just supports everything that I do. So yeah, shout out to everybody that supports me. And shout out to you for uh, you know throwing me on this and giving me a chance to chop it up and show my views and all of that. Yeah, for sure. The pleasure is ours. Have a hell yeah, That's right. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Next week is Women's Month, so we got Jordan Woods and Jody Woods next week on Bye. Friday. So yeah, everybody tune in and shout out to you and thank you again, Mike. Definitely, bro. Appreciate you. Likewise. Hell yeah.